Hey folks, Nika here, and today we're gonna do something a little different, and today we're gonna actually be talking about movies. Now, for those of you that know me, uh, you probably know that my favorite film genre out there is the martial arts film, and that's followed closely by action and horror, and honestly, I'm not sure why that's the case. I think a lot of it has to do with how fun and furious the choreography can be uh, from movie to movie, compared to other film genres, and this is especially the case when it comes to Hong Kong films of the VHS era. Now, martial arts movies come in all shapes and sizes. You have, for instance, classic Kung Fu, ninja action, and Hong Kong stunts with kickboxing. But today, we're gonna talk about the number one trope that helped popularize martial arts cinema the world over. And that's the tournament trope. You know, that kind of trope where one guy or gal goes toe to toe with other guys or gals to see who's the best of them all. So let's kick back and shoot the breeze about my favorite tournament fights in martial arts cinema. Let's go. Now, before we get into this, I just need to make one thing clear. Just because one movie's got a ring fight doesn't necessarily mean it's a tournament fight. I got an example for you, so just bear with me. Take Van Damme, for instance, in kickboxing. Even though a good handful of the fights happen in the ring, they're not really, how should I put it, tournament fights. Van Damme isn't competing against a series or sequence of fighters compared to what he's doing in Bloodsport. Lionheart or the Quest. Because of this, my rule of thumb for tournament fighting in martial arts cinema is number one, the fight scenes or a good chunk of the fight scenes are competitive in nature and not just ringside one-offs. Uh, he or she is going to be fighting somebody and another person and another person, right? Number two, competitive training is a huge motivating factor for all the cast leading up to the big fight. And number three, participation in the tournament is key to our hero or heroine's storyline and development. Now that we got that settled, let's talk movies. Now, for those of you that might be a bit green to this trope, you generally got two kinds of tournament fights in films, especially martial arts cinema. And the first kind we're gonna talk about is sports fighting. And when I say sports, I mean the layout, the feel, the vibe is all about modern sports. Take the late Sonny Chiba and Karate Bullfighter, for example. There's a ref, judges, and even a point system. Now, despite Sonny kicking ass and taking names all over the mat, um, this fight in Karate Bullfighter is only used to introduce Oyama Mastatsu's badassery and outsider status in Japan's post-war karate scene. David Bradley's fight in American Ninja 3 kind of also fits into that category as well. However, truth be told, the tournament's only kind of a MacGuffin and it's totally forgotten by the film's second. But if you want a film that's fully focused on all the trappings of a tournament, then we need to talk about the Karate Kid. All right, what are the rules here? Oh no. First time you, first time me. Now, what we're seeing here is a legit tournament, like the ones we saw growing up as kids, filled with crowds, brackets, commentators, cameras, mats, refs, you name it, it's got it all. The same thing goes for The Karate Kid's lesser cousin. It's a movie we like to call Sidekicks. 
starring the man with the invincible beard himself, Chuck Norris. Now, Sidekicks captures this tournament vibe to a T. There's weapons demos, there's breaking, and yes, there are Kumite like sparring fighting matches. Now, Sidekicks was a flick that was on all the time when I was a kid. And when I was younger, it seemed like the coolest thing ever, but nowadays, I probably wouldn't recommend it to you. I mean, sure, I like ninjas, bat mullets, and slapstick, but when you couple that with the main character's unhealthy obsession for Julia Nixon, what you're left with is a boatload of cringe. If I were you, I would just fast forward to the fights. But North America isn't the only game in town when it comes to sports fighting because Hong Kong cinema has been doing this forever, especially since they've done it in the 70s with the likes of the Five Fingers of Death. The film's first half is literally Lolia training for this big tournament so that he'll be the best in northern China. And let's just say what he accomplishes here, he does it in style. But, spoiler alert, he doesn't use his jazz hats until the very end of the film. Sorry. There's even Hong Kong US co-productions from Seasonal Film Corporation. One that I remember growing up was Super Fights. <laughs> It's a sports fighting film that features an all-American kid who's trying to basically make his way into this WWE-like ring fighting show. It's been ages since I've seen this film, so I'm definitely due for a rewatch. <laughs> However, if you want something that has a more opulent setting, definitely check out the Lion King tournament match in Once Upon a Time in China 3, which was filmed in the heart of Beijing. It's a masterful set piece filled with color and chaos and masterful ass kicking thanks to Jet Li and Jung Jin Jin. Don't miss out on that, especially now that it's on the Criterion Collection. Another Hong Kong highlight that I haven't watched fully is Extreme Challenge, where it's ring design, weaponry, and use of protective equipment makes it feel like Sasuke or American Gladiators.
And yeah, that's Scott Atkins in his first Hong Kong gig. And that's Patricia Jolly from Power Rangers in Space, the best Pink Ranger out there. But if you want sports fighting taken to the next level, then we need, we need to talk about Fearless. Jetly portraying the legendary folk hero Boyanja. Fearless, I'm gonna be pretty honest with you guys. Fearless features the kind of ring fighting that has no place in the early 20th century. I mean, look at this. Fearless starts off with a diplomatic pissing contest that's pretty much contested with fists. Spears. And swords. It's got neighborhood ring fights. Beatdowns on top of a tower. Some circus shit with Nathan Jones. And a finale of epic proportions. It's not only one of Jet Li's best films out there, it's also one of the best films out there to feature tournament fighting. And Fearless is another indicator where when it comes to pissing contests, Jet Li pisses the farthest. But let's be clear, if you were a newbie and you wanted a film that kind of gave you the right amount of sports fighting and drama and tension and intensity, then I would recommend to you, if you're Greenhorn, Robert Radler's Best of the Best from 1989. Dayhorn opens up quickly with the right to Tommy Lee's head. Now, let me be clear, Best of the Best does have its problems, okay? Uh, its interpersonal drama is a bit hokey, and Chris Penn's character is fucking racist, but it's got Darth Vader. Illegal hit! Illegal hit! Training. Teamwork. If I'm not it's over, I can hold him up for 30 seconds. God damn it, I said David! Ah! And one of the best, most underrated third acts in all of martial arts. Oh, what a move! A 
crushing blow by Tommy Lee to Dehan's head. Is it possible? Can 26-year-old Tommy Lee bring the American team back from a seven-point deficit? Score, Tommy Lee! And those of you that are new to these kinds of movies, best of the best, in my opinion, is a great intro into how sports fighting collides with martial arts cinema. If you find it on your Netflix queue, check it out, watch it today. It's good stuff. And it's an 80s hallmark. You can't miss out. Now that we got the clean and happy shit out of the way, we need to go into the nitty gritty and talk about the second type of tournament fighting you're gonna find in martial arts cinema. And that's underground fighting, my favorite kind. Unlike the pristine, organizational, or commercial nature of sports fighting, underground fighting, well, it's a lot seedier and there's a heavier emphasis on violence. Now, for underground fighting, these tournaments are usually off the radar. And honest to God, these fights can happen in prisons, out in the street, or under the watchful eye of the super secret organization in a super secret location. When it comes to prison fighting, one of the films I could recommend is Jean-Claude Van Damme's work with the late Ringo Lamb in In Hell. It's a decent film where Van Damme trades off his kicks and splits for chokes and arm bars. Good stuff. But if you wanted something leaner and meaner, honestly, I'd go for broke and I'd become undisputed. Now, either Undisputed 2 or 3 or even Boyka could work because these films feature some of the most hard-hitting, no-holds-barred choreography you'll ever see in a North American action film. Now when it comes to street fighting, the first movie that comes to mind for me is another Jean-Claude Van Damme film, and that's 1990's Lionheart. Here, Van Damme plays a deserter from the French Foreign Legion who basically gets wrapped up in street fighting in order to help his family, who have, unfortunately, fallen on hard times. Lionheart's a fun watch, filled with great fights, <laughs> CD backdrops, a ton of rich assholes, and the occasional butt shot. But the best is when Van Damme goes batshit at the end. Literally, I mean, this is Van Damme's trademark. However, if you wanted something a little more grittier and a little more close to home, then honest to God, I would go for 2009's Blood and Bone, featuring the one and only Michael Jai White. It's a great film where the term in fighting here is night and day compared to the likes of Best of the Best. Timberland boot, bitch! 
And like Lionheart, there's no bracket structure or elimination structure to the fights. In Blood and Bone, it's more about flexing your skills in each neighborhood in the hopes of raising your profile to move on to more lucrative fights. <laughs> fights go all out. If you see Blood and Bone on your Netflix queue, drop everything and watch it today. Right here. Right here. However, if we're going to be talking about underground film fighting, then we need to talk about the kind that's sponsored by the Nefarious. Dubbed by me as the Secret Tournament, it's the trope that not only popularized martial arts cinema in the West, but it's the trope that gave us the greatest video game genre ever, and that's the fighting game. Now, secret tournaments are pretty formulaic, and they're either run by a ruthless capitalist, a fucking wizard, your brother's soul is mine, or a bunch of faceless Asians in the 80s because, you know, it's Hollywood, we all look the same, and apparently we don't deserve any agency. But the core rule guy, the black dragon society. But sometimes we do get that agency. And this was especially the case in Keanu Reeves' directorial debut, The Man of Tai Chi. The Man of Tai Chi is really interesting in that our hero, played by Tiger Chen, is a martial artist who participates in a great deal of sports fighting. But due to his teacher's financial troubles, he decides to dip his toes in the lucrative world of legal online fighting. It's a great film that's got good production values, great fights, and a relatable working class protagonist in Tiger Chen. If you see it on your Netflix queue one day, give it a watch. But if we're talking about video game adaptations and secret tournaments, then we need to talk about Paul W.S. Anderson's 1995 hit, Mortal Kombat. Featuring a malevolent final boss. Your soul is mine. No! A badass protagonist. and lots of ass kicking. Mortal Kombat was and is the king of fighting game films. Sure, the CGI is a bit dated, but when you pair that with stunning locales, great production design, and a memorable cast that's true to the game. Mortal Kombat 1995 is hard to beat. As an older millennial who lived through the 1990s fighting game boom, Mortal Kombat was a big deal in theaters. for some 90s arcade action, hit up Mortal Kombat today. Just the way I like them. Dumb and ugly. Now, I'll be honest, I've spoken a lot about Jean-Claude Van Damme, but I can't end this video without talking about two of his other tournament movies, and one of them just happens to be his directorial debut, and that movie is The Quest. I 
I'm long overdue for a rewatch here. But when it comes to the secret tournament fighting here, the quest mostly delivers. In addition, it takes a world warrior approach and features an international cast of fighters in a traditional bracket setup. The quest isn't Van Damme's best film, but from what I recall, it's a decent effort for a first time director. But if you want to talk about the ultimate Van Damme secret tournament film, then we need to talk about Bloodsport. Filmed as a U.S. Hong Kong co-production in 1987, Bloodsport emerged in 1988 as the de facto Van Damme film that we all know and love. Though it has bad hair, questionable acting, Why were you with Hassan? Terrible stereotypes. You want me to spell it out for you? And racist jokes about Asian food. I don't know, I haven't tasted it yet. I think I'll tell him to kill it first. It's one of the greatest examples of a secret tournament film, featuring an international cast of fighters, a secret society, an epic venue, and one of the greatest villains to ever grace a martial arts film, Chong Li. Played to perfection by the great Bolo Yang. Bloodsport is full of memorable moments, but when it comes to the underground fighting, it's hard to beat. This is especially the case when Jean-Claude goes batshit. <laughs> Gives Chong Li dementia. <laughs> embarrasses him by forcing him to mutter some indecipherable word that somehow insinuates defeat. Blood sports got it all. But it'd be a crime for me to talk about Bloodsport without talking about the OG. The film that propelled the tournament genre in the first place, the film that propelled martial arts cinema the world over, and the film that pretty much inspired the entire idea of a tournament or a secret tournament at large. And that film is 1972's Enter the Dragon, starring the man, the myth, the legend, Bruce Lee. <laughs> Not only was Enter the Dragon's portrayal of the secret tournament a game changer in martial arts cinema, it inspired a slew of video games including the Street Fighter franchise, Mortal Kombat, and Double Dragon. I mean, for real, two of Double Dragon's henchmen are literally named Roper and Williams. And the Lee brothers, well, uh, that's obviously not a coincidence, is it? Enter the Dragon not only gave us the nefarious asshole has a tournament trope, it also introduced us to Bola Young, Jim Kelly, and Angela Mao, who would go on to make more and more kick-ass films. But you didn't come here for a fucking history lesson, folks. You came here to talk about fights. And even though the tournament fighting is pretty sparse at Enter the Dragon, what we got is fantastic, snappy, brutal combat. <laughs> Bruce Lee's choreography is fantastic here, and one of the best fights here is his tournament fight with the late great Bob Wall. And when 
the tournament collapses and it becomes a James Bond flick. The fights outside of that just get better. Yeah! better. And if you think our evil mastermind gets away with it, think again. Because here, Bruce Lee is Costco. And when he sells you pain, he sells it wholesale. And honest to God, when you're looking at the other films we covered today, Enter the Dragon is pretty influential and it's hold its grip on martial arts cinema is undeniable. I mean, look at The Quest, look at Bloodsport, look at Lionheart, look at Blood and Bone. Oh, there are so many films in the secret tournament genre or the underground film fighting genre that I could recommend to newer fans. But if you wanted to start with a classic, start with the OG. Start with Enter the Dragon. Well folks, that pretty much wraps up my video. Now there are a few movies that I didn't really review or talk about, including the Cry to Kid remake, the uh, Halle Berry film Bruised on Netflix, and even the Dead or Alive uh, film adaptation by Corey Yuan. I haven't gotten around to see those movies yet, but it's on my list, so hopefully I'll get to see them soon. If there are any movies or tournament films that I kind of missed, definitely let me know down in the comment section below. And last but not least, I need to give a special shout out to my wife who really helped me out in terms of pushing me to get this done. I also want to give a special shout out to all my fans and subscribers out there who've been really patient with me and who've always given me good ideas and good feedback. Lastly, I want to talk and say thanks to all the friends I've made on Twitter, especially on Action Twitter. Thank you guys so much for being such great pals. And also I want to give a big shout out to Times Square Kung Fu. Times Square Kung Fu really inspired me to get on and talk about my love for martial arts films all the way back in June of 2021. So really, big thank you to you, man. And thank you all for sitting around and watching this to the very end. And let me know if you dig this content. I probably have a lot more ideas coming up in the near future. When it comes to music videos, I've got some ideas still, so just stay tuned for that as well. Once again, thanks for everything. We'll see you next time.